Cardiovascular events are the leading cause of line of duty death among firefighters. And we've known that for decades since USFA and NFPA have been keeping records. But we have often felt like there was nothing we could do about cardiovascular disease. But now in the era of everyone goes home, we're rethinking that. And we understand that if we want to bring every firefighter home, we need to address cardiovascular disease and cardiovascular events head on. The same way we've used policies and procedures, education and technology to decrease the risk from asphyxiation or burn injuries, we now know that we can decrease cardiovascular events with proper research, understanding the problem, and then mitigating the risk. About 50% of line of duty deaths are due to cardiovascular events. And it's not just the disease and disability. Cardiovascular disease is causing firefighters to retire early or shortening retirements. So cardiovascular disease is one of the biggest issues we can go after if we wanna make sure that firefighters are healthy and safe throughout their careers and retirement. Firefighting is very strenuous activity. Firefighters perform heavy muscular work, often in awkward positions. They work in a hot and hostile environment, often without visibility, with noise impairment. There's tremendous adrenaline surge. Causes tremendous disruption to the cardiac system, the vascular system, even the blood profile. Cardiovascular disease is really a cluster of diseases. But when we talk about cardiovascular disease in the fire service, the primary diseases we're talking about are coronary heart disease, sometimes called coronary artery disease, and an enlarged heart, cardiomegaly, or left ventricular hypertrophy. That's sometimes called a hypertensive heart. The fire service has long thought of a sudden cardiovascular event as a heart attack. A heart attack is one type of a sudden cardiovascular event. And when that happens, a plaque in the artery ruptures and a blood clot forms, and that occludes an artery. And that deprives the heart muscle of the oxygen it needs for the heart to effectively pump blood. But a sudden cardiac event can also occur because of a fatal arrhythmia that causes cardiac arrest, or it just causes the heart to stop beating. Research data show convincingly that a firefighter is more likely to die of a sudden cardiovascular event during or after firefighting activity compared to station duties. In fact, about 100 times more likely to die following firefighting activities. So we need to figure out what it is about firefighting that can trigger a cardiovascular event and who is most vulnerable to the triggering of a cardiovascular event. So there are non-modifiable risk factors and modifiable risk factors. So I'm sorry to say this, but being a male over the age of 45 or having a family history of early cardiovascular disease increases your risk of suffering a cardiac event. But what I wanna focus on are the modifiable risk factors. These are things that are largely under an individual's control. So high blood pressure, high blood glucose, high cholesterol, smoking, inactivity, excess body weight, all increase the risk of suffering from a sudden cardiovascular event. In fact, just as an example, a firefighter with high blood pressure is 12 times more likely to suffer a sudden cardiac event than a firefighter with normal blood pressure. And so we have to be really mindful, once we identify that a firefighter has a risk factor, we have to carefully manage those either through lifestyle changes, a wellness and fitness program, or a medication if it's needed. Physical fitness is one of the most potent protectors of cardiovascular health. A firefighter who is fit has a 70% reduced risk of suffering a sudden cardiac event compared to an unfit firefighter. Beyond being protective against cardiovascular death and in fact all-cause mortality, a fit firefighter has a more effective heart. The pumping action of the heart is stronger. If there's an arrhythmia, the firefighter is more likely to survive it. A fit firefighter also has a vascular system that can respond to the changing demands of firefighting. 
and fitness also improves your blood clotting profile. So a blood clot is less likely to form. There are additional benefits from fitness. Fitness helps decrease blood pressure, improve the lipid profile, manage blood glucose, and decrease excess body weight. The most important steps that a firefighter can take to decrease a cardiovascular event or cardiovascular disease is to avoid smoke through smoking, tobacco use, or smoke on the fire ground. Secondly, a firefighter should get a medical evaluation by a professional who's aware of the job that they do and the environment they operate in. And it's important to follow up on the findings of that medical exam. Thirdly, a firefighter should embrace a wellness and fitness program that focuses on fitness and nutrition to manage cardiovascular disease risk factors. Physical fitness is one of the most potent protectors of a firefighter's health. Physical fitness increases your performance, your ability to do your job. It increases your strength. It also improves cardiovascular health. The heart is stronger, pumps more effectively, and can withstand damage more readily. Physical fitness also improves thermal tolerance, so a firefighter can operate in a fire situation wearing the PPE more effectively. And physical fitness has a profound effect on the vascular system and on the blood clotting potential, making a cardiovascular event far less likely in a fit individual. A medical evaluation is absolutely essential for a firefighter to have safely perform his or her duties. The medical evaluation is intended to find anything that precludes you from safely performing your job or that might lead to sudden incapacitation. But even more, this medical evaluation is intended to identify problems early so that they can be managed and that the firefighter can stay on the job and enjoy a healthy and happy retirement. But it's important that you have an occupational medical evaluation to ensure that you can safely and effectively perform your job. There's tremendous concern in the fire service about cardiovascular disease and also about cancer risk. These two terrible diseases have some common risk factors. That would largely include exposure to smoke and toxins that can increase the risk for cardiovascular disease and also increase the risk for cancer. Importantly, there are things we can do to decrease the risk of cardiovascular disease and cancer. Both of these terrible diseases are lessened when we improve our fitness, decrease body weight, and embrace a health and wellness program that is attentive to behavioral health. Researchers now are not just doing academic work, they're doing work that's aimed at improving the effectiveness of firefighters and protecting the health and sometimes protecting the life of firefighters.